Hello and welcome to this video series on Visual Studio 2012 and ASP.NET 4.5 features. My name is Paul Kotruba and I'm an escalation engineer and developer with Microsoft on the ASP.NET team in France. During this video series I aim to show some of the new features that have been added to the newest version of Visual Studio VS 2012 as well as ASP.NET web forms. In this first video, I want to focus a bit on Visual Studio 2012 and some of the new features of the project template that comes out of the box when you create a new Web Forms 4.5 ASP.NET application. As you already know, Web Forms um, was, for the better part of the .NET framework's lifetime, for more than 10 years, equal to ASP.NET. ASP.NET Web Forms used to and still is update and be updated every time Microsoft shipped a new version of the .NET framework. In the last few years, a second development model called MVC for Model, View and Controller was also released by Microsoft. This framework was released as an out-of-band package that is completely disjoint from the releases of the .NET framework. Hence, the ASP.NET team could iterate on MVC much faster than it could do on web forms in the past. So, let's have a look at how web forms evolved, uh, MVC evolved. First of all, MVC came out after the release of the .NET Runtime 3.5 with MVC version 1, and then the ASP.NET team rapidly iterated to release MVC version 2. The most widely used version of MVC is MVC version 3, which came out with a runtime 4.0 and which uses the Razor Syntactical Engine. With the release of the .NET Runtime 4.5, MVC 4 is now available and uh, comes with Visual Studio 2012. Recently, Microsoft also released a version of ASP.NET called ASP.NET Web Pages, which is a light-end starter framework that is meant to simplify development using a tool called Web Matrix, which was also released by Microsoft. What you should retain from this diagram is that each of these frameworks is still ASP.NET, and that all of the features that are available in one of the frameworks are also available in the other two and vice versa, a concept called one ASP.NET. Hence, for example, uh, routing, which was first introduced in Web Forms 3.5, was also present in ASP.NET MVC and in Web Pages, although MVC made, ver made routing very popular. Unfortunately, uh, the tooling that we're using uh, today, notably Visual Studio, uh, is not quite up to date with this pa new paradigm of one ASP.NET, but it is estimated that future versions of Visual Studio will allow you to create an empty ASP.NET project and then place in web forms or place in MVC or place in web pages or have a mixture of the three. With that, let's get started by jumping directly into Visual Studio 2012 and looking at the new features. For the better part of this video series that is to come, we will be looking at demonstrations on how you can use various new features of ASP.NET Web Forms and Visual Studio 2012. So to do this, I'm going to use a development machine which is running Windows 7 and on which I already have Visual Studio 2012 installed. So let's go ahead and fire it up. I've already created a new uh, website by going to the file New Website and then selecting the ASP.NET Web Forms site. You're of also created an empty website or an MVC v3 or an MVC v4 website from Visual Studio or a dynamic uh, data website. So as you can see, uh, the sample website comes in with lots, uh, quite a, uh, a lot of content already predefined and we'll have a look throughout this video series at all of the content that comes with, uh, with the sample website. But for now, what I just want to do is fire up the website and show you what it looks like. So to do this, I'm just going to go to this pull down menu and I'm going to fire it up with Internet Explorer. Also note that with Visual Studio 2012, um, we have the possibility of running the website 
with any of the browsers that are installed on the machine, which is not what used to happen with f uh, earlier versions of Visual Studio. So on this machine, I have Internet Explorer 8, 9 and Opera running uh, side by uh, and installed, so I can choose to either run the website with Opera or with Internet Explorer directly from Visual Studio. So the first thing I want to show you is that the ASP.NET team have done quite a job at uh, cleaning the markup and making it a little bit more readable for the um, default site. So um, the first thing to notice is that the view state has been tremendously reduced in comparison to its size in earlier versions of the framework, which is uh, one of the things that uh, MVC developers did not like about using web forms because the uh, view state, which keeps the state of the controls as they're posted back uh, from the client to the server, did tend to grow quite large. The new template actually also makes use of HTML5 elements in HTML. So for example, we can see that we have a section element here, to uh, a header element here to define the header of the page. And then inside we have section elements and we also have nav elements to define the links that will do the navigation for the page and then we also have other section elements for uh, feature content for example and then we have the content of the default uh, page down here and we also have stuff like for example H group sections to contain a group of H tags H1 through HN so now what I want to do is I want to just uh, unmaximize the browser and then I want to show you uh, what happens to the site as I continuously reduce the width of the browser so you can see that uh, all of the page layout is neatly flowing and I do not have uh, horizontal scroll bars that are coming up but as I pass below a certain width in the browser what you see is right now the uh, look and feel of the site changed I no longer have the uh, images here and as I go down lower the website is now at, uh, is now rendering in a way which is much more suitable for mobile clients like tablets or smartphones so we'll see how this is done as well. And the last thing that I want to show you right before shutting down the browser and jumping into the code is the uh, registration part of the website. So the web forms uh, template now comes with full registration and that makes use of either the um, forms-based authentication or we can use something called OAuth. And let me just show you that. Um, if we click on the login page, what will happen is that you'll see that I have two different ways of authenticating. One which is via forms-based authentication. I can put in a username and a password, which is the old way to do it. Um, and this has traditionally been working in ASP.NET. Or I can use external accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Hotmail, uh, and of that sort to uh, authenticate. Now, how does this work? I'll show you in a minute. So let's go into Visual Studio and let's first look at the CSS that drives uh, the page. So in earlier versions of Visual Studio, even Visual Studio 2010, uh, CSS editors were not first-class citizens in Visual Studio. So if I go into the content folder and I bring up the style.site.css style sheet, um, the first thing I want to show you is if I go and I want to change one of the colors here, what I immediately get is a color picker. And the color picker, first of all, shows me the various colors that are already um, available for my website. Um, so, for example, all of these um, colors here have already been used in the current style sheet. So I can just pick one of those. Or if I want to, I can have a full color picker and then just pick a color from the color picker or if that is not sufficient and I also support opacity so now I don't have the squigglies when I do opacity in uh, uh, in CSS 
and what I can do is I can also grab the eyedrop tool and pick one of the colors that I like, for example, the database color from SQL Server Manager, if that is the color I wish. So let's just undo that change here. Um, and the other thing that I did want to show um, is the media queries. So um, media queries are a way of specifying different layouts based on the browser capabilities. Notably here, what the style sheet is doing is it's saying for browsers that have the screen width smaller than 850 pixels, please go ahead and create the following layout, which is the mobile layout, which you've just seen when I uh, minimize the browser. Now, with regards to authentication, um, what's new is that if I go into the app, um, into the, uh, whoops, here we go, into the app start folder, I will have something called an auth.config cs file and this file here uh, allows me to configure open uh, authentication so I can just uncomment these sections of code and then I will already automatically start supporting Twitter authentication uh, Facebook uh, Microsoft or Hotmail live and also Google so let me just restart the site and show you what that looks like I am going to mention that obviously if you want to get this working uh, in a production site, you will have to actually provide the uh, Twitter uh, credentials for your application, so your Twitter consumer key and secret, your Facebook app ID and your secret and so on, so that each of the providers can actually work and uh, authenticate the incoming user's account uh, with either Facebook, Gmail, Twitter or any of the others that are available. So if we go into my website right now and I click on the login button what you'll see is that um, instead of just having uh, the second part where we said that OAuth is disabled now I do have uh, Twitter authentication I have Facebook I have Microsoft and I have Google automatically out of the box the other thing I did want to show um, is the NuGet package manager. So let me just come back into Visual Studio and go into Tools and then go into the Library package manager and then um, Package Manager. Uh, we'll have to stop the website from running before I can continue. Otherwise, I will not get the Package Manager console up. So let's go in here, and if I select the manage the manage NuGet packages for solution, NuGet is something that was introduced as a Visual Studio 2010 um, as a way of installing additional uh, binaries and settings for a project either uh, uh, binaries that come from Microsoft or from other companies or other developers. And to start with, all of these NuGet packages that you see here, including Entity Framework, which was one of the first groups to uh, use NuGet from Microsoft, already get pulled in from the web. You, also, you see you also have jQuery UI, you also have jQuery and so forth. And then what I can do is I can just look for updates um, online directly if I'm connected to the internet. And whenever there are newer releases of those packages, I can just come into this console and automatically get the latest versions. For example, I see that there's a new jQuery version, a new modernizer version and so forth. Um, but what I did want to see what I did want to show was um, down here on the second page we have the Microsoft ASP.NET Universal providers that are installed and which replace the older pro membership providers and the advantage of these providers are that they're capable of working with uh, SQL local DB they're working they're capable of working with SQL server but they're also capable of working with SQL Azure which is the version of SQL server that is in the cloud and it basically allows me to switch the authentication repository from my website uh, from a local database if I'm working on my uh, development machine to a SQL server if I'm working on my production machine or even go directly into the cloud just by modifying the connection string in the web.config file. 
Now, the other thing that I want to show is that by default, the application that comes uh, when I create a new project in Visual Studio works with SQL Server Local DB. So a SQL Server Local DB instance will be created in the project folder when I uh, create the first account, uh, when I register the first account with my website. So while the site is starting up, um, the, the site I've, I've created is called WebSample. And if I go into WebSample uh, on disk, um, I will see all of the folders that are in here and, and the different packages. And in the WebSample web sample folder, I have a folder called App Data, which for now is empty. But um, once the website starts up, if I click on Register, and load the registration page and then say username let's type in Paul and then an email address Paul at Contasso.com and then a password and confirm the password there we go and we click on the register button what you'll see is that the um, code for the website automatically will go and will create a, a SQL Server local DB which will be placed in the app data folder for your website and that will store all of the credentials for this particular user or for any other new users that I decide to create. So there we go. Now I'm authenticated and I can say hello Paul and then I can go in here and I can see the account management page as well if I want to. Um, and do uh, account management related uh, tasks directly out of the box. So as you can see, as the while the, the site is loading, if I go back into my app data folder, I can see that now I have, contrary to before when it was empty, I have an ASP.NET web sample uh, with today's date .mdf, and I'll have another one with a .ldf. These are the database files that get created uh, by the website as it is running. So what we'll do is um, in the next uh, sessions of this uh, video series, I will be working with this uh, project template and I will be uh, switching the authentication to SQL Server to show you how we would do this and then start by building on functionality to the functionality which is out of the box to show you some of the new features that are coming with ASP.NET uh, 4.5 and Visual Studio 2012.